you guys, it's me, Marcy, and I'm back again for Thursdays at 3 with me. Hey, glad to have you here. I am going to do another flower today because it seems like that's what's been requested the most. So, how about if you say hi in the comments so I know who's watching, and I won't be able to say hi to you because once I reverse this, I'm not going to be able to see because the phone that's recording is going to be right above my station and everything. But we're going to do an iris today. And if we have time to do something else, if it doesn't get too hot and my phone doesn't stop working, I'll see whether I can fit in another little something. But we'll just have to see how warm it is. Hi, you guys, I can see you right now because it's on me, which feels really weird talking to myself and seeing myself right here but it's a gorgeous day in Atlanta and I've had the door open I had to finally shut it and uh, let's get going before um, you guys lose interest so I'm going to reverse the phone and then I'm going to show you some things real fast oh my neck. last week a lot of you joined me and I sure appreciate it we made this dogwood flower I think it turned out pretty well you can see the clear transparent and you can see the height, how we moved it around a little bit, gave it a little bit of movement. And remember on the back, we had made a base bead like that. And you can see through it. That one was on a 332nd. So I'm so glad you guys are saying hi and telling me who's here. I appreciate it. So here's our dogwood from last time. And I still have some of the little flowers from before. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends on how you're looking at it, I sold the iris that was my sample for today and it is shipped already. So you're just gonna have to wing it with me and imagine as we go. But I did wanna show you something before we start. You know, it's like show and tell. So see this little flower here? You can see it's just a simple little flower that I had made. What I used to do was I would make these on the off of the end of a mandrel, and you can see I just made dots and smashed them with the center section. And then what I would do was I would get a flat back adjustable ring and I'd wire them and glue them onto it. So then you're able to wear a ring with your flower that you made. And usually you can find these types of inexpensive little bases with the flat back on it. Um, on Etsy or a place like that. I'm sure you have other ideas for supply places, but I just thought I would mention that to you. Okay, so I think that was what I wanted to, oh, wait, 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 a couple other things. Huh, here's my advertising. Just wanted to show you, you can see where you can find me, Instagram, Facebook, Ah, you found me already, and there's my email also. Oh, and what I don't have is YouTube. I do have some videos on YouTube also. I made this little bunny last week, he's kind of cute. So since I saw you last, all my kilns cratered, and I had to order a new one, pain in the you know what, but got it done, and so we're back in business again. And I have a show starting on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, it starts at 11 o'clock Eastern Time at night, and then it goes through Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time in Artisan's Open Market, where I'm selling some of my beads. And you are welcome to join the group if you aren't a member of the group already, and come see what we've got, because I'm making new beads madly. Okay, so if you looked in my last video, we had the iris there that you got to see. What I wanted to say was, we're gonna do a little differently this time because what the heck, we can. But let me show you what I used before. I had a whole bunch of cased purple stringer. Some of it had clear, a lot of it has ink blue, which is probably my favorite, favorite purple. It's that deep transparent blue. I don't know whether you can see it well. I'm gonna bring all of this up here so you can see a little better. But anyhow, I love this color and I put it over light colors so that you have darker on the edges where the dark transparent is and lighter um, for, to show underneath. And that plus some extra clear 
was what I used to make the iris that you saw last week. And you can go back to last week's video. You can find it on my page. Um, just go to photos and then albums. And under albums, you look for videos. And of course, you'll see some of my cat and other silly things. But if you poke around and look for under it, it shows you how long they are. If you find the ones that are like 15 minutes or longer, those are videos of me, probably, probably me melting some glass. So this is what we did before. I thought this time we would change it up just slightly. I kind of like the purpley blue ones, irises. So I got out some glass and um, I was thinking maybe Periwinkle or Zachary, which is a sim glass or something along that line would be good. Here's a periwinkle. And so I want this, because I think this is such a pretty color, and it may just be me, because I like pretty colors. Um, I thought maybe we would use this one, and we'll keep out some of this. This is going to make it a darker iris. And then I want to have some clear also. So I've got some of this. Do you guys ever buy these thick rods? I have a lot of clear and they don't tend to be as scummy either. So we've got this also. And how about a 332nd mandrel? And we're gonna need some yellow. So I don't know about you, but I haven't found a yellow that I absolutely adore. And I don't tend to keep a lot of yellows around in my house because I don't do a lot with yellow, but I had a bunch of this. This is not my favorite color personally but I needed a yellow for on the, I don't know, they're like little tonguey looking things on the petals. Somebody type in and say what they're called because I don't know any of that stuff. But what I did was I mixed it with some white and I got this softer color, which I do like a whole lot. I just thought that there would be nicer contrast than this glaring one. The other yellow that I had on hand was this, which is pretty but I thought that it would take away from this it was just too much I wanted something softer so that's why I mixed this one and I would say um, more than half and half of white I would say two parts yellow to three parts white would be about what this one turned out approximately I did not measure it but I just wanted to show you the difference to me, there's a huge difference in the softening. If I wanted to take away more of the brightness, I might have seen how it works with maybe mixing it with the ivory or something that would soften it even a little bit more, but it wouldn't be quite as yellowy looking at that point. So let me put on my didymiums. And you see, I've got these really strong magnifiers because <laughs> I'm old, but, and, and it's easier to see that way. I'm gonna put my didymiums on after I clean off those lenses that I just stuck my fingers all over. And we're going to jump into it. I hope you guys are doing well as artists in residence. Remember we changed our um, title and we're calling ourselves that just because we can. Why not? Okay, so let's get started. The basic thing to remember with iris is three, three up and three down. So you're going to have one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Boy, that was just, it could be a hand artist the way I tell you this stuff. So let's start with the base bead. And I have my trusty minor out, which is kind of the one that always does whatever I need it to do, except when I want to make a big bead, and then I have a problem, then I have to get out one of my other torches, and I have others, but I really love this one. It always works, and that's really nice, and I can't say that about my kilns, because boy, oh boy, what a mess. Okay, so we're going to make a base first because you got to have something to put those dots on and petals and see if you are a beginner watching us do you see how my glass is perpendicular to my mandrel 
that's the trick. If you keep it perpendicular, it's going to go on a whole lot straighter. And unfortunately, I didn't learn this until about six months into my bead making when I was first learning. That would have helped me a whole lot if I had known that sooner. So I'm just evening this out. And I'm watching the color so that I can see what it looks like when it cools. And I'm gonna make it a little bit wider because that's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to get the petals on and I won't have to work quite as small. So for me, it's easier to do the three down first and then I'll do the three up, but I'm gonna make it wider still. And you understand that this means that the iris will be held vertically. The hole will be vertical after this cools down. I will bring it up as an example, but you can see by the color that it's way too hot because if I do this, it's going to be drooping all over the place. And we don't want that. Okay, so it's changing color, which means it's cooling some. So this is the way that the iris is going to go three up three down every other. Can't get much easier than that. So when I work, I tend to move my mandrel around to what I want. I know a lot of us are kind of used to just holding it like this and go, oh yeah, parallel, that's what we gotta do. But when you're working in sculpture, it's so much easier to get at stuff if you turn everything around to where you need it. So first thing I'm gonna do is put three dots and try and make them semi-evenly spaced. This is not my forte, but we'll get kind of close. Doesn't have to be perfect. So if I have two here like this, I hold them evenly and then I go just to the center of both of them and I have a place for the third. So that's what it ended up looking like. A little bit off, but close enough. So I have places where it's gonna go and then the other ones are gonna go right in between those. I'll put those on right now. And those, when they're the same color as your base bead, if you have to move something or do something differently, you can just melt it right in and it's like camouflage. This kind of gives you an idea of where you're going and what you're doing. So on my other ones, I had made them with these types of stringers. That gave them a lot more translucency and uh, color variegation. This is a very solid opaque. So we're gonna have to do something with it to make it a little bit better. And that's why we're gonna use the transparent colors with it. So I'm making my first petal and I'm just holding it like this. And I call this holding it at 12 o'clock. If we were looking at a clock, it would be straight up. If I wanted to stretch it, I would hold it at six o'clock pointing down and let the heat droop it down a little bit. But I just want to kind of hold this in place for now. We're going to change it in a little bit. But I'm going to get all of them on there so I can see whether they're kind of close in color first. Uh, color. I know what color they all are. In size. Sometimes the mouth just gets in the way of what I'm trying to say. So I'm holding it in place for a second while it's cooling a little bit and I'm watching the color. If I tried flame cutting it when it was too hot, it would just kind of fall all over the place, wouldn't it? So by holding it in place, I can let the glass go where I want it to go, not where it wants to go. So welcome if there are any people from the Beginners Lamp Work group here on Facebook. Glad you could join us also. Here's another one. That one kind of went in the wrong direction. We'll, we'll corral it and get it where it needs to go. I shouldn't have talked so much and paid more attention instead. We're letting it cool a little bit, watching the color. This one went AWOL, but we'll get it. Okay, so we're gonna add some color to it and we're gonna add some transparent clear to it. The clear will give it the translucency and the ink blue will give it a little bit more color. We could even stripe it if you have other um, 
like these would be cute striped along it also. You, you, you got a lot of stuff you can do to play with it. And my suggestion is, when you are um, playing with it, that you just make a spacer bead and add a big dot that would represent your um, petal and try it out on that. Do a whole bunch of samples so that you find out just what you like. And I know some of you guys are stuck that you can't use a torch right now, whether you go to a studio and, um, and rent space there, or you can't get to where it is because we all need to stay inside. First of all, thank you for being safe. That's the most important thing out of all of it, but I feel your pain. So maybe you make some notes and write down the link after I post this permanently and make a list of what you're going to do when you're able to get back into it. Because sometimes that helps, knowing that when there's an end, you've got something to do. Okay, so I'm getting out this one. This one has ribs, and it's a concave, convex style petal maker, which looks like it's going to make things pretty fast for me. You could use, when we did this last time, just about anything and take tungsten tweezers or regular tweezers and put it where you want it to go. But what I often do with these is when I want to get the petals approximately where I want them to be, sometimes I'll take just plain old mashers and I can't find my tweezer mashers that I really love. So I'm using these medium sized ones and I'm just kind of spreading them out a bit to see where I am with them. And then I can add my ink blue to them. I have a good old big old place for it and I can adjust these to where they need to be on the flower. I can just move them around. So let's get them all kind of in place. And I'm heating one by one my dots that I've covered in transparent clear. keeping everything nice and warm because don't forget once you use your metal tool it's going to suck up some of the heat that you have in the glass so it is more likely easy to break and crack so you just keep reheating everything and you remember what I told you last time that you check when you put it back into the flame if it has a glow immediately you still have some heat in it if there's no glow in it warm it up very deliberately and carefully. Okay, so now we know that we can make propellers, but propellers also, because we're not too far off from that. Let's add some ink blue for some color interest. And, okay, I guess we're gonna do it like this. We're keeping everything warm in the black, black in the back of the flame. Now I'm going to go around the edges just because I think it's pretty and add the ink blue along there. Obviously, this isn't going to look exactly like a real iris. It's my artistic version of it, which is fine. If you want to make it more realistic, I think that's great, and they're beautiful when they're more realistic, too. They're beautiful anyway, actually, I think. You just do whatever your heart desires. And we're heating this one up on all along the edges also. Now, this is a time also that if you want to make it more transparent, you can. You can add some more uh, transparent clear to it. The thing is, it's also going to make the petals even that much bigger, which means then you're going to need to make even bigger, taller petals. And that's going to be a little bit harder for you, generally speaking, if you haven't done this before. So I'd say this time I'm going to miss out on some of the translucency to keep them a more reasonable size. And then if I make it again like this, I'll think, okay, I'm going to make those original dots a little bit, um, a little bit smaller to begin with. Okay, and we're just going to 
pop this in and we're going to take it and bring it down. Okay, see the first one? Can you see that angle also? So I took it, smushed it, and then used my wrist and did this. So I went back and warmed it up from behind a little bit because don't forget, I just sucked the heat out of it. And we're going to go to the next one and do the same thing. We're going to heat it all up both sides. I always heat from the back side a little bit more than the front side if I can. Heat the front side, grab it, squish, and pull it down gently. Okay, heat it back up a tiny bit more to the back side so I don't lose the little bit of ribbing that I have and go to number three. And number three, here we go. So don't forget, you've done this, you're gonna have to keep them warm while you're building your other ones. And you're gonna spend quite a bit of time keeping them warm. And you don't want them to uh, touch your mandrel either. Okay, we'll, we'll do final finish on these later on. That kind of gives you an idea of where they are and what they're gonna do. So next, we're gonna do the same thing going up going to do before we do that? We're going to add some of our yellow because we can and that will just get it out of the way. So don't forget those are kind of like I call them tongues but that's probably not the correct term. So don't forget if you've just come in tell me your name, say hi, maybe where you're from so I know who's visited here. And if you have a suggestion for next week of what you'd like to see, let me know. These are just a stripe down of the yellow. Okay. And the other thing I like to do before we start the other part going up is adding the yellow section in the front. If you have followed me on Facebook, you might know that I have no gardening or plant ability at all. So if I'm not calling things the right name, they haven't researched it. But you'll also know I have no natural abilities for growing stuff. And I expect all of you to help me out here and let me know. Okay, so what I did was I added very carefully like a, a couple wraps of the yellow and what I'm going to do towards the end is I when I am ready to bring those petals up I'm going to stripe up just a little bit of the yellow and just to give it a little bit so it looks like I think they're called sepals but I'm not sure so here we go with the upper petals we're going to do the exact same thing except in the reverse and in the interim we are keeping everything warm and I'm trying not to melt in the stripe. I'd love to keep it raised if possible, but if it melts in, it's really not that big a deal. And also, if you're new to all of this, one of the ways that it will work best for you is if you keep it small, it's a lot more manageable than going really large with it. Okay, so here's dot number one. I pushed in, attached it well, and I'm pulling it out so it's a little bit longer than what we did with the bottom ones. And I'm just gonna let it cool there. And meanwhile, while it's cooling, I'm gonna warm up everything just a little bit. And let's do the next one. Number two, you notice how I keep my bead warm while I'm melting pretty close to the amount of glass that I'm going to need. For me, that works well. Other people do it differently, but for me, that's what works. So I've heated it up, I've touched it, and I'm holding it downwards for the glass to all go down a little bit and cool, and then I will flame cut.
and well it's cooling I looked at the color so I knew that I could let it flop a little bit because it's not too floppy I can go around and heat up the other petals while I'm waiting for that to cool okay and here we go with number three you didn't know it was going to be this fast did you I'm hoping Got enough glass heated up. I got my spot. And here we go. Push down, pull up. And I'm also letting it, the gravity, take it downwards a little bit while it's cooling and I'm watching the color. You can watch the color too. And as it changes back closer to its original color, I can flame cut it. Okay, so we're going back and we're heating up the other petals because remember they're floating in the air and that and they're, they've been pressed so that they're thinner so they chill out a little bit faster. Now it seems to me we've got to put a little bit of clear on this. Well. this just a little bit. It'd be a little bit easier, so we're going to heat each one. Just give it a little bit. Not enough. And as you're pressing it, you can move it to where you want it. Now let's heat up the petals in between, though. Okay, let's do another one. Front, back, sides. Adjust it to where you want it to be so you can add your clear and your ink blue. And then do the last one. Heat, heat, heat. Get it a nice rosy color. Smush and adjust it so that you'll be able to get to it. And in between, we're going to heat up everything. Okay, let's see whether this clear does a little better. Come on, clear. going to add a little bit of, but not much, just a little bit of translucency to add it a whole lot more. It would add a whole lot more translucency. Okay, go around, we'll get the back side. Warm up the petals. More back side. And don't forget, this back side is the side that's going to be seen because we're going to be pulling them up. So you don't want to skimp on the transparent there. There we go. And let's do the other side. Keep everything warm. And I'm being generous with this clear. Partly for the translucency, but I want to make sure that these petals are going to be big enough to get up and, and cup around and be about the right size. Okay, so you can see, we're giving a side view. This is where we are. And we've got some of the ink blue to add around the edges also. That will add a little bit of width too. Keeping everything warm. easier for me to start at the base and go up and then add the top if needed if I didn't have enough. I just feel like I have a little more control that way. Let's do the next one. Everybody doing okay? Are you doing some art projects while you're home or are you just trying to keep your head above water? I know it's kind of hard here. I have the nicest husband, but he wants to talk a lot and I'm used to not talking, being a little bit more of an introvert and doing things when I wanted to because he was always at the office. So it's, it's a little bit of a transition. It's good. It's all working, but uh, it's getting used to. Anybody else in that boat? 
I hope your family's healthy and that you guys are too and that you stay nice and healthy. Okay, so now I'm going to heat each one and flatten it a little bit more and then I can do the smush with this tool. So before I start doing that, I'm going to make sure that all of my lower petals have been warmed up, that they have a nice glow to them when I hit them with a flame. I'm careful not to heat them so much that um, they start flopping around. So be very careful how you do it. Watch the color. And that's the whole trick in heat control is learning about the color of your glass when it's hot and how to handle it. So. It's better to press a couple of times if you aren't sure than have it start flopping where you don't want it to go and it's not having control of it. Okay, that's the first one. And that's pretty close to the size of this. I could thin it out a little bit more. I have another tool that I use, and I don't know its correct term, but I'm going to show you. It's this one, and I think it's a Home Depot type tool but it seems to smush flatter, skinnier than the others, which can be good and bad. It makes it more fragile, don't forget, but sometimes you need something flattened a whole lot. That's a good tool for it. And I don't know its name. If any of you know the correct name for it, please put it in the comment section so that everybody knows. And I hope you're writing down what you want to see next week. I kind of had an idea of something very different that we haven't done. Maybe an application of silver foil or gold foil leaf or some other leaves. I thought that could be fun. But let me know. If you still absolutely have to have flowers, we can do it. But you know, it's kind of funny. Flowers aren't what I normally do, so I'm kind of just winging it on some of this stuff. There are other flower artists who are so much better and have so much more experience than I have. Okay, so we've got three of these and we're going to warm up the bottom petals. We're going to heat up the top petals and we want them to curve in so I'm looking at my concave convex tool to see how that's going to work and I also know that I'm going to want to put in the yellow and I'm thinking, okay, do I want to just put it in and let it flatten or do I want to see whether I can scooch it in afterwards? And I think what I'll do is smash it down low, put it on, add some sepals and then push it up. So that's my intent and we might have to go to a plan B, we'll see. So first things first, we're going to heat it up both sides. Keep everything warm everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Which one was I heating up? This one, I think. This one. More heat, more heat. I'm watching the color. It's getting pretty rosy. I want it to curve in. So I'm smushing and pulling up just a little bit. I'm going to add the yellow before it goes all the way, but you can kind of see what it did. Let's add a little yellow while it's warm. Let's do the next one. But first, let's heat up all the bottom petals. The base bead, don't forget the base bead. Okay, let's go to the next one. Lots on the back, a little bit on the side, some on the front. Careful where you're aiming that flame. 